rebuilding a Stuart Models twin launch model steam engine part 6, making some new gaskets and fitting the cylinder covers. Really, I should be making the crankshaft, but I'll do that later. For the moment, it's a simple job, making a gasket for the two bottom cylinder covers. I'll also be fitting the stuffing glands and fitting the O-rings that are going inside them. This is how I last left the cylinder on the last video, so it's time to remove the covers, first putting them in a safe place, and then after that I can remove both of the pistons and put those in a safe place too. I don't really need to put them in the right order, they can go anywhere, because the pistons will fit in either cylinder, as previously I've reamed these cylinders to be exactly the same size. And the first thing to do is to carefully remove the studs. When working on an engine that I don't know anything about, I generally expect the worst. Sheared off studs, glued in studs, sheared off bolts, with just the bolt heads stuck in holes. But the good news so far is I haven't found anything wrong, other than the broken lug on the main casting. What I mean is that all the parts I've removed, which are held together with little bolts, have allowed me to remove the bolts too. Moving on now to the studs on the top of the cylinder block, and once again, these are coming out very nicely. The minute that I free them off with my small pair of pliers, it only takes my finger pressure to remove them from the block. And believe me, this is not always the case. Often studs have been over-tightened and the threads are damaged. All these are okay, there's a couple missing, but that's not a big problem. I'm taking this opportunity to clean up both of the faces of the cylinder block on some fine sandpaper. What's on screen at the moment may also look like some sandpaper, but it's not. It is an ink pad that I bought a while back. Every workshop should have one. It's a very useful tool for duplicating things. For instance, I'm turning this into a printing set so that I can print the impression of the cylinder block on some gasket material. I have to do it two or three times to get a good saturated content on the cylinder block. Yes, that looks okay, and all I have to do now is press it onto the gasket material. And this, of course, leaves an impression of the shape of the block on the gasket material. It's not exactly a perfect image, I do admit, but I have seen worse in art exhibitions. But it's good enough. I'm using a scalpel, and if you use one of these, be really careful with it, because it's extremely sharp. And also, a health and safety warning. These scalpels are designed for cutting through tissue. You know, skin, veins, arteries, and removing organs from bodies and things like that. Not gasket material, and if you put too much pressure on, the blade will fracture, and it flies across the workshop, and if it was to hit you in the eye, you'd know about it. So whenever you're using a tool like this, always wear some kind of eye protection. As you can see, the general idea is to just cut out the centres. What I've done with this one, just as an illustration, because I'm making a video, is I've cut round the outside of the gasket. I wouldn't normally do this, I would leave as much material on the gasket, because otherwise, working with a flimsy, very thin piece of gasket material, you do run the risk of tearing it. What I'm currently doing on the video, is using a drill bit to mark the positions for the holes. It would be a much better idea though, really, to put the cylinder covers on top of the gasket, and then drill the holes using the cylinder cover as a template. I'm just trying to show a different way of doing it. But I must say, if you're going to do it this way, you need a very steady hand. It's a good idea to have a practice run first if you're not sure. It's only gasket material. I get this for nothing from a friend of mine. My friend runs a company that manufacture gaskets, and these are just some of the offcuts from the larger gaskets that they make. Once all the holes have been drilled in the gasket material, the gasket can be placed in position on the cylinder block over the studs. And then with nine 7BA nuts at your disposal, it's time to fit the nuts to the studs. I'm using a nut spinner. This, of course, is a 7BA nut spinner for putting the nuts in place. It speeds up the job, and it's a very good way to get the feel of how tight these nuts need to be. Once you've run the nuts all the way down with the nut spinner, all you really need to do is just give each one a bit of a pull with a spanner, just to nip it up a little bit tighter, but any tighter than that, and it will suddenly shear, and then you have a problem of having to get a broken stud out of the casting. Be warned, it's very easy to do. 
and I do feel that I must add at this stage that it is very difficult to get broken 7BA studs out of a cast iron cylinder. I speak from experience. Apart from being very careful not to snap off the small studs, it's also important to tighten them opposite each other. If you watch the sequence you'll see it's a little bit random, but the next one will be one opposite the one that I've just done and so on and so forth. And the last thing to do is to go around every one and just double check that you haven't missed any and give them a tiny little squeeze and with a bit of luck there'll not be that horrible sound which says you've broken a stud. So smug mode engaged, I can now go on to the next part of the operation. This is cutting away the excess gasket material. My father always said to me when he saw me doing a job, always keep your fingers behind the cutting edge. And I still do that. If I had my fingers underneath the cutting edge, by now I would have cut my fingers in about three places, because you cannot see where the blade is going, or whether there's any cast iron underneath to press down onto. Throughout this episode, like most of the other episodes I do about making things, I occasionally speed up the footage to just get it over with, because it's a very routine job as this. If you cut the gasket before you fit it, it will never look as neat as this. The next job is to fit the gland nuts. Although on this particular model of Stuart engine, in common with quite a few of the Stuart models, this is not strictly a gland nut as such, it's much more like full-size practice. You have a couple of studs, and the gland nut fits over these studs and can be tightened against the packing material using a couple of nuts on the studs. In with the box of bits and pieces, which is how I received this engine, a box of bits and pieces, there were some Viton O-rings. And the good thing about these is that they're harder than silicone. Because the piston rod is a bit of a rattle fit in the cylinder, I thought I would put the harder Viton in first, and hopefully this will seal the piston rod against the side of the cylinder cover because the hole in the cylinder cover where the piston rod goes through is a little bit on the large side, a rattle fit so to speak. And I've also put a softer silicone o-ring in each of the piston rod glands. Hopefully the Viton will not get pushed through the hole in the cylinder cover and the softer silicone rubber o-ring will help to seal it against steam leaks. What I'm doing at the moment is fitting the studs that hold the top cylinder covers in place. Most studs are usually like this one, with a long thread at one end, no thread in the centre, and a short thread at the other end, and it's the short thread that goes down into the casting, not the long thread. This just means that the stud can be tightened into the hole because the thread will only go so far. Two of the studs were missing, and quite annoyingly, I have quite a lot of Stuart studs, but none of them this size, so I had to improvise. I put a couple of bolts in and tightened them down into the bottom of the hole, chopped the bolt heads off with a pair of side cutters and then cleaned them up on my new one inch belt sander that I bought followed by running them gently on a polishing spindle to dome them and make them shine like the rest of the studs. So when the top cylinder covers are in place and held down with the small 7BA nuts then only you and I will know that two of the studs are not proper studs. Now that all the studs are tightened into the holes the cylinder covers are quite a tight fit. I'm not going to drill them out, they're not that tight. So I'm just using my soft hammer to tap them into place. And then, in exactly the same way as I fitted the nuts to the lower cylinder covers, I fit all the nuts to the studs to hold the upper cylinder covers in place. And once again, I've really speeded up this video to get it out of the way quickly. The same thing applies in exactly the same way. I'm being very careful not to shear any of the studs. And that's it for this episode. That's the cylinder block back together. Both pistons are in with the cast iron piston rings, the glands are in, and the gland packings. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.